Hello, I'm Brent Gardner, and this is the NRA ILA Grassroots News Minute for Friday, July 30th. Here with today's first story is correspondent Krista Cup. Thanks, Brent. Recently, NRA's Institute for Legislative Action wrapped up its lobbying efforts at the first session of the United Nations Committee drafting an arms trade treaty. The preparatory committee for the UN Arms Trade Treaty Conference met in New York from July 12th through the 23rd, and these meetings were one in a series to prepare for a major conference to finalize an arms trade treaty in 2012. NRA ILA was one of the very few pro-gun groups at the meeting, while anti-gun groups had a strong presence, led by the International Action Network on Small Arms. The chairman of the meeting, Ambassador Roberto Garcia Moritan, released a 14-point outline of a possible arms trade treaty. The inclusion of civilian firearms remains one of the more controversial aspects of the proposed treaty. In a move that disappointed anti-gun groups, Moritan's treaty outline includes a category for exclusions, and the supporting position paper lists an exclusion covering civilian firearms. Still, we must remain vigilant on this and a series of other threatening issues. This preparatory committee will meet again in New York the week of February 28, 2011, and again in July of 2011. There will also be an extensive series of workshops scheduled for 2011 to support the Arms Trade Treaty. We will be sure to provide any new developments, and please be sure to check back with www.nraila.org for ongoing updates. And now, back to you, Brent. Thanks, Krista. As announced in a recent fundraising letter to its members, the Center for Biological Diversity will launch a once-in-a-lifetime campaign this summer to ban all lead bullets everywhere in the United States. Make no mistake, hunters and shooters are in the crosshairs of this extremist group. With regard to issues pertaining to wildlife and the environment, the NRA focuses on science when formulating its decisions and policies, not politics and emotion. With no scientific justification for a lead ban, CBD's campaign is a deceptive attack on hunting. Radical environmental groups like the CBD have already contributed to declining hunting numbers by helping to eliminate access to vast public hunting lands. A complete lead ban would exacerbate this decline by mandating expensive, non-traditional ammunition. Hunting should not be an activity limited to the wealthy. Every hunter is essential to sustaining our great American sporting heritage. Hunters and gun owners have been the greatest contributors to conservation for nearly a century. In addition to volunteer efforts to improve habitat, billions of dollars dedicated to habitat and wildlife restoration projects have been generated through the payment of hunting license fees and excise taxes on firearms, ammunition, and other hunting equipment. In its over-the-top fundraising plea to its members, CBD states, the NRA will spend $100 for every dollar we spend. It will pull out all the stops against us. What the elitists in CBD do not understand is that NRA's power comes from its millions of members who will take action to preserve the use of traditional ammunition for current and future generations. Indeed, we will pull out all of the stops because this fight is too important to lose. Be sure to educate your friends, family, fellow sportsmen, and elected officials about these types of attacks and the radical groups behind them. For more information on these stories and up-to-date legislative alerts, please visit our website at www.nraila.org.